starting off with none other than good old flatulence. And here to help us out with this subject, we've invited gastroenterologist Dr. Jorge Rodriguez. Welcome back to the show. My pleasure. My pleasure. And everyone knows it's funny, it smells, we all do it on average 14 times a day, but why does it happen? Uh, well, there are two main reasons that people fart. One is you produce gas, and the other one is you take in gas. Like, see this guy, he's eating so quickly. Eating quickly makes you swallow a lot of gas. Having beverages that are carbonated, sometimes using straw. So this brings in certain gases that your body burps out. But sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes you don't burp it out, and it goes into the stomach where it keeps on moving the gases into the small intestine. And then at that time, the gases that couldn't come out just sort of live in the small intestine where they move down all the way through 20 or 30 feet of small intestine, and they start releasing different gases. This is beautiful. A little bit of hydrogen, yeah, a little bit of methane. Do not let that one out. No, well, it's going to come out no matter what. It's going to come out. <laughs> Here in the colon are what I like to call the fart factory of nature. Oh, and it is. It is. In the colon, there are a lot of bacteria that go ahead and digest the undigested, especially carbohydrates, some more. So the food particles go into the cells, where the cell then goes and starts the digestive process, and they bring out even more gases, methane, sulfur-containing uh, gases. Those are very pungent, very pungent. So this is great, because we get to just blame the bacteria. Absolutely, we should blame. And then it all has to go somewhere. So it has to come out through the colon, where it goes into the rectum, the anal sphincter, and then this determines the loudness and the pitch. The sphincter does. Absolutely, it's very musical. So is that why some people toot and some people roar? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go sit back yeah. down because I wanna talk about that for a moment. And, and hopefully everyone understands that concept. When food goes undigested, particularly fiber, Fiber is a carbohydrate that our bodies can't digest, but bacteria, they love it. So it's good for our GI tract, but the bacteria get it in the colon, and they start producing some terrible smelling gases. Now, that's uh, hydrogen sulfide is the gas, if you want to get technical. You find it in meat, protein powder, eggs, garlic, and onions. All right, now, uh, what do you think of that? No. Oh, <laughs> no. What is that? I'm good, I'm good. Oh, oh, that's that's how is. old is that butter? No, Am I tearing? A, I feel like I'm that's tearing. a different kind of fart, though. Yes, right? that is butyric acid. Nothing okay. beautiful about butyric no. acid. No, no. Uh, you find that primarily in fruits that have seeds, like oranges, grapefruits, um, you know, peaches, things like uh -huh. that. But that is not the winner. The most popular fart, I think, by far, the Oscar winner is methane. Methane. And that's one you can light up. That's one that you can light up. <laughs> Did you there's, there's a reason, yeah, there's a the reason they call violent. natural gas. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we will not light this up here in case yeah. we all go up in flames. But like we said, methane is made you know, in the colon. Um, it does light up. I mean, some fraternities have blue flame clubs. I don't know if you've ever heard about those. Mm. But Been don't. There, I remember that. Yeah. Remember the college days? Yeah, don't try it at home. And again, you, find, you get methane again with lots of protein, you know, with cauliflower. So. All of these foods that you see here are really very likely to cause gas. You can't avoid them, you know, so you can decrease them. Uh, raisins, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, onions, garlic, protein. Protein, amino acids contain sulfur. Takeaway and here to some extent is good foods cause yeah. gas. Yeah. Gas is normal. It, yeah. It's yeah. part of our, our daily lives. It's part of our makeup. If, yeah. you're, if you're not passing gas... That's, That's probably a problem. a problem. Now, beans, being, beans are considered a big gassy yeah. food, right? But one thing, one way you can cut down how much gas will, beans will give you is how you cook them. If you soak them in water for overnight before you cook them, that actually leaches out some of the, uh, some of the sugars in the beans, mm. the, the oligosaccharides, and which are what cause the gas. So. That, that's one way so of doing so it. And, and it's beans. what you cook the beans in, too, mm -hmm. right? I mean, refried beans are mm -hmm. going to have... Going to have a lot of grease, mm -hmm. you know, that ferments. And then Which will give carbs. you that old butter. Oh, yeah, really. Now, I've never tried this, but I've heard some people use activated charcoal uh, yeah. to kind of cut down the amount of gas. What it, do you think it about I, that? No, I think it definitely helps. And if you look at some cultures, I mean, they also even use a little bit of burnt food. Burnt okay. toast can mm -hmm. help. Some cultures actually even eat you know, matches that they've lit up, and okay. it's all because of the, the charcoal. Okay. Interesting, huh?